So it was a busy month since our last update. On the 14th of September, I was in Bradford. I took part in what was called a Heroes Walk, which is a fundraising event for Lansdowne House, uh, which is a house in Bradford that works with special needs kids. On the 16th, I was in Toronto and had the opportunity to have a dinner with the Vice President of Air Canada. He wanted to talk about how Air Can can start developing more of a relationship with Indigenous people. On the 17th, the Chiefs of Ontario uh, held an election strategy session, so we, we took part in that just to find out um, how, how um, some of the issues that need to be brought up during this federal election time. I also took part in a strategy session with some members of the Board of Governors at the University of Waterloo talking about the strategic plan for the university, as I am a member of the Board of Governors on the University of Waterloo. On the 18th of September, I was in Ancaster to um, visit with some women who have a women's book club. Uh, they wanted to talk about the book that was written by Tanya Talay called Seven Fallen Feathers, about kids in, in um, Thunder Bay that were found dead. Um, so, and I thought it was important to meet with them because they really want to know more about us as Indigenous people and they wanted to educate themselves and make themselves more aware. I am on the Master Planning Steering Committee for the expansion of the Brantford General Hospital, which is a long-term plan. Uh, there was a meeting held in Brantford on the 19th with the mayors and the MP and the MPP and the Brant Health Care Director and uh, the board, the foundation that's uh, going to be raising some of those money. So we started that meeting. And then we also all uh, went over to a grand opening of a new hotel in Brantford. It's called Homes 2 Hilton. It's a nice hotel that's right on uh, 403 in Garden Ave, right beside a Holiday Inn. Uh, if people want to, looking for a place to stay when they visit the area, it's, it's a 90-bedroom uh, hotel with and all the rooms are suites. So it's, it's beautiful. And on the 20th, we were lucky to have Jordan Tutu here, former NHL player. He was here at the gathering place to get talk about his story and to talk about mental health and wellness. And the place was packed, so it was so good to see so many people out there. On the 21st of September, I was in Brantford uh, to help celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Wilfrid Laurier University campus in Brantford. It was a good turnout as well. And CN Rail Safety Week, we had declared that, that along with CN, issued the proclamation to support Rail Safety Week from the week of September 23rd to 29th. And on the 24th, I was at a special Board of Governors meeting at the University of Waterloo to talk about their strategic plan. I was in Toronto on the 25th uh, for some meetings, and I had the uh, opportunity to have lunch with uh, Annette Verschuren, who is the president of NR Store. She's a renowned business person here in the, in the country, actually, and it was um, an opportunity for me to sit and have lunch with her and chat about some future opportunities. I also joined uh, Rebecca Jamison and Linda Parker from Six Nations Polytechnic in a meeting at Indigenous Services with an assistant deputy minister to talk about more funding for uh, Six Nations Polytechnic. The Development Corporation had their annual general meeting on September 25th, and on the 26th of September, I was in Toronto for a Chiefs of Ontario Political Confederacy meeting. It was a regular meeting. Later the same day, I attended a reception at the Lieutenant Governor's Suite, which she held for some visitors from Australia. Visitors who were in Canada, or in particularly in Toronto, working to strengthen Indigenous placemaking in major urban centres. And later that evening, I attended the 15th Business Achievement Awards Gala for the Canadian Aboriginal and Minority Supplier Council. That was also held in Toronto. On Friday, September 27th, we had CBC from Kitchener here live at Six Nations at Our Sustenance. They were doing a show about food security and uh, talking to different people. Some of our chefs were there, some of the staff, some of the community members. So that was a good show. I also uh, had the chance to sit down with Craig Norris and we did an interview, which was played on CBC, I think, the following week on his morning show. Later that day, uh, we also went down to the old number six school grounds. And at the request of the late Bob Johnson, who was a counselor at Six Nations, uh, we renamed that park Robert E. Johnson Memorial Park and then did the unveiling of the plaque. 
it was a beautiful occasion because but Rob, Bob did a lot of work to make sure that that playground um, was built up for the community to use. There's also a pavilion there, in, uh, which was put up by the family of the late councillor Raymond Hill. So they were also on hand to take part in this. And so just thank you to both families for being there and, and you know, for the fine work that their, their family members, the former councillors, did on behalf of the community. Uh, that evening on a September 27th, the Workforce Planning Board of Grand Erie hosted an appreciation lunch and a discussion on how the government of Ontario can support the skilled trades community. They were held here, they were here in our community uh, uh, on the evening and I think Great was there uh, meeting along with them. Then comes the weekend and there were a lot of events on the weekend. September 28th, I was in St. George at the Federated Women's Institute of Canada annual meeting. There were women from across the country that were there. And it was wonderful because they also uh, tied some ribbons on a tree to commemorate the missing and murdered Indigenous women and to call for the implementation of the uh, recommendations that are included in the inquiry. On September 29th, we were at a taco fest at Harmony Square in Brantford. Uh, this was hosted by the Grand River Council of Aging and promoting the work that they do. We also were at Mohawk Lake. Uh, to mark the accomplishment of the remediation of the old Greenwich uh, Cockshit site and talk about plans for that whole area and how, uh, how we can get things moving and make it into a top-notch tourist area. Then we were at Woodland Cultural Centre for the Survivors Walk to commemorate the residential school survivors. That was well, very well attended and um, people walked the survivors out to the road and then uh, went back in and had a meal. So it was a good event and, uh, thanks to the staff for organizing that. September 30th, again, was Orange Shirt Day. Everybody had their orange shirts on to commemorate the residential school survivors. I was also in Toronto that day, and uh, I was in the court, at the uh, appeal court. People will remember that Jonathan Styers was killed by Peter Cahill, uh, went to trial, and he was found not guilty in June of 2018. The Crown has appealed it. They appealed the case, uh, citing that the judge erred in his instructions to the jury. Uh, so we were in the appeal court at Osgoode Hall to hear the um, appeal hearing that was taking place. Now that it lasted the whole day, and now that that's over, we wait for the um, results, which could take, I understand, from nine months to a year. So once that decision comes down, I would encourage community members to be at the court to support the families, as I was last week, um, because if it... If the appeal is granted, that means the families are going to have to sit through another trial. And if the appeal is not granted, it means that Peter Cahill will go free. So the families are going to really need our support when that decision comes down. Uh, later that day, I had a meeting with the Minister of Finance. We wanted to talk to him about some gaming issues. So I did talk to him. On October uh, 1st, uh, we had Mayor Kevin Davis and Mayor David Bailey here at Six Nations. It was the first meeting we've had uh, to talk about some of the issues uh, that we can work on together jointly or and then some of the issues that we have singularly with the City of Brantford. They're also looking at maybe having a tri-council meeting, including all members of council, after the uh, Six Nations election. Um, on October 3rd, I was also at the um, Chamber of Commerce to again listen to the mayors. There were two mayors that had uh, lunch it was called Mayor's Lunch, and they were um, up at the front ans answering questions from everybody. October 4th, we had our vigil for missing and murdered Indigenous women. Uh, I want to thank Amber Silversmith for the work that she did in organizing it and the families that worked on it. It was very well attended. On the 5th, I was in Brantford again for uh, fourth annual ER run and walk, which was being run by the Brant Community Health Care System Foundation. Uh, as, an, um, as an effort to raise funds to improve the ER and to improve patient care in the ER. On October 6th, Sunday, uh, there was a packed house at the Mohawk Chapel for the Royal Commemoration Service and their annual Harvest Thanksgiving. This service marked 189 years since the chapel was consecrated and 100 years since the visit to the chapel by Edward, the Prince of Wales. They also unveiled a coat of arms that was granted by the Queen. And... Um, that that will be used in the future. Uh, this past week, I was in Toronto on October 7th for the Chiefs Committee on Housing. And on October 8th, I was at the um, a strategy political strategy session they were having on October 8th and, um, and 9th that was held there. 
Um, and it was a, it was very uh, an emotional event for me because my last official meeting is the Chiefs of Ontario, and I was totally unexpected that they honored me and gave me a, a star blanket, and I got to say a few words and to give everybody a hug goodbye. So it was a good event. Uh, on October 10th, I had a visit from a, a lady who is a teacher in Waterloo. She's a member of the Shiite Muslims, and she said that they want to reach out and establish relationships with Indigenous people and uh, want to know how to do that. And I suggested to her that they may want to come down and learn more about us and, and uh, get maybe... Uh, she said they also wanted to volunteer, so you might see them volunteering at some of our events, like maybe the Christmas baskets, but they do want to reach out, and I think it's important that they learn about us and then we also learn about their culture as well. I also yesterday had a meeting with the lacrosse teams and the Ontario Human Rights Commission. I think in previous emails, and we've talked about the Six Nations Rivermen uh, being told by the uh, Ontario Lacrosse Association that their games could not be played at the Gaylord Powell Serena, that they had to be played off the reserve in Brantford. Um, this led to other events, and there's been other events in lacrosse, and you know I've talked to some of the guys with the rivermen, and then um, they said, I said, do you want me to bring this to the Human Rights Commission? And they did, they said yes. So I did contact the commissioner, and she sent one of her staff down to meet with the uh, lacrosse teams, and we did have a good meeting yesterday. We had representatives of the rivermen, the rebels, the arrows, and the chiefs all there, and we spent a good, I would say, a good two hours talking to them. And um, so they're going to continue to discuss and decide whether they want to make an actual application to the tribunal. So those discussions will continue, and I, I want to thank the staff, the teams for coming in, and the staff from the Ontario Human Rights Commission. So we'll keep our eye on that and keep everybody apprised of the next steps that take place.